Shares of Uber are rallying today after the ride hailing company announced it will bring driverless Waymo rides to Austin and Atlanta starting early next year. Kate Rooney is following that story in today's Tech Check. Kate, what do we know? Hey, Kelly. So the race for robo taxis is really heating up. This is the latest sign that a driverless future might be closer than we think with the already ubiquitous Uber now partnering with Alphabet-owned Waymo. This really underlines a willingness by Uber to partner with major competitors as it tries to fend off others in the space, namely Elon Musk's Tesla, which, of course, is betting its own future on self-driving cars. Tesla's highly anticipated robo-taxi event, that's happening in about a month. There's even Amazon in this space rolling out its Zooks cars later this year or early next. It's, that's going to be in Las Vegas. I did take a test drive in one of those earlier in the week. And then Waymo, it's already coming for Uber's dominance here in San Francisco. You see them everywhere, but Bernstein estimates that Waymo is already making up 2% of all ride sharing here. It has doubled its paid robo taxi trips to 100,000 a week. The way this is going to work in Austin and Atlanta, though, the news today Uber riders will get matched with a driverless Waymo car. These rides will be available through the Uber app. And right now, for example, in San Francisco and LA, you got to download and book through a separate Waymo app. So, Waymo spokes spokesperson, though, telling CNBC there are no plans to partner with Uber here in California. Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi earlier on Squawk in the Street, though, saying the technology is going to bring safer drivers to the road. He says he truly hopes people will start ditching their car to have a robot driver and that people are now warming up to the idea of ditching drivers altogether. We're seeing actually the percentage of accept rates when offered an autonomous vehicle going up generally. There are some people who aren't ready for it. But I think the more you see these cars in the street, the more you see how safe they are, how cool they are, the acceptance rates are going to go higher and higher. And Kelly, as consumers, this means we're going to have some choices, maybe a driverless buffet here. You can think of it that way. Big tech may end up competing on price, subsidizing some of these rides, which we saw in the early days, if you remember, of the ride hailing battle between Uber and Lyft, Kelly. I'm just thinking through, do we know much, Kate, about the economics of this? So Uber, I assume, will slap their name on it. But this is they have to be paying Waymo a pretty penny to have access to this technology because Waymo is already having San Francisco, maybe L.A. Waymo itself could just go into Austin and Atlanta on its own, couldn't it? Yeah, that's right. We don't know the details of the economics, but I've been thinking about this as Waymo sort of white labeling their technology and the hardware here. You've got to think there's some sort of subscription or a cut of each ride. And Uber is sort of acting as the front end consumer facing side of the app, which is really mastered through ride hailing. But the economics right now are unclear, though. Uh, Waymo you can kind of think of it as they're going to be the back end provider, the hardware provider. They've got their own software. But yeah, you've got to think they're Uber's paying up to sort of get a slice and also stave off competition. You see these Waymos exactly. everywhere. I was stuck behind one on the way to work this morning. Were there you? <laughs> yeah, there, I, as I understand, you see them all the time now.